Hi, I'm Jessica. I know my channel's a little chaotic. I'll put this in a playlist later, but it was too important not to put out there right now. So I am a political scientist. I hesitate to say that only because my channel is mostly about like music and my friends and stuff. Anyways, The Fourth Turning is a book written, that looks upside down to you, it was written in 1997 by a couple of political scientists who were analyzing different uh, seasons, is what they called it, saculum is like the circle of the seasons that we go through, hold on. Anyways, of the four seasons, what's considered winter would be what we're in right now. It's the fourth saculum, uh, the fourth turning, as it were, because that will be a period of destruction and rebuilding. And when I heard about the economic uh, recession, when I heard about the economic downturn the other day, it like triggers something in my mind of, of this book that I've read a while ago. I'm going to read some of this. <laughs> Hopefully somebody gets something out of it. All right. I do want to start off by uh, saying this is chapter 11. I'm going to read a little bit from the first of it. That, yeah. Given the gravity of the coming saculum winter, like I was just explaining, you may be asking, can anybody do anything about it? Saith the preacher, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. In each of the four seasons of life and nature, there are things a person should and should not do. There is no single style of behavior, no one maxim of right living that is appropriate for all ages. So basically it's saying that whatever we've done in the past to rectify all this craziness is not gonna be the same tools that we're gonna use in the future. So the next little part that I found really interesting on this, it was talking about, keep in mind, this was 1997. It talks about um, the leaders that will emerge through this era. And it's uh, pretty much hits on why Trump emerged. So <laughs> it's prophetic, like I said. Um, in recent years, many Americans have despaired that their nation no longer produces leaders who can galvanize and inspire. Yet it is the turning, not the nation, that elevates great people to the apex of power. Lincoln and FDR are both cases in point. Both had to wait for, uh, wait for the crisis, which is like the, the period right before. Um, the crisis. Both had to wait for the crisis to hit. And unraveling is an era, which most people of intelligence, vision, and integrity do not seek much less get elected to high public offices, nor is it an era when people want leaders to lead them anywhere. So, prophetic, right? Um, this one gets better. This one's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit longer, um, little passage, but I feel like it's very important. Okay. To cut through linear doctrines, Americans need to reappraise their opinions of the current turnings. Many people bear grudges against a decade they call unfavorably. For some, this is the 1950s. For others, the 1960s. For still others, the 1980s. These unfavorable memories reflect a negative judgment of, respectively, the high awakening and unraveling. This is talking about the other um, periods of the saculum they refer to. All right, such judgments on these time frames are misplaced. None of those turnings or decades had to be exactly what it was, but each was a phrase of history. America had to transit. We had to go through it. What we remember is the 1960s could have been altered, perhaps made better, perhaps worse. Yet even with the altering, we would only have experienced a better or worse not 1960s. It would not be a, a repeat of the 1950s or a hastening of the 1980s. The American high did not require institutional racism or sexism, but it did require a social stasis. The con consciousness revolution did not require a Vietnam War or Watergate, but it did require both a youth revolt and a cultural experimentation. This is talking about themes, how people say that history rhymes, it doesn't repeat. 
Okay, Today's Unraveling, which again, they were in uh, 1997. Today's Unraveling does not require profane media or endless budget deficits, but it does require individualism and institutional decay, which we could both say recurred in the 90s. A fourth turning does not require economic depression or civil war, but it does require public sacrifice and political upheaval. Yikes, right? <laughs> All right, so it also goes on, this is the last little bit that I'll read, and goes on to talk about um, what the parties have done and how they're just not accommodating to these different seasons that we're inevitably in and going to face and such. Okay. Uh, yo blah, 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 yet both parties are also harmfully post-seasonal. In their quest for an ever bigger harvest, Democrats want to remove sacrifice even further from the public lexicon. They seek entitlements for every victim, including the entire middle class, without caring whether all this guaranteed consumption is sustainable. If Democrats get their way, they would impose huge debts and future taxes on millennial children. In their quest for ever more individualism, Republicans want to make public authority ever more dysfunctional. They seek to starve all government of revenue and are willing to shut down whole federal agencies to make their point. If Republicans get their way, they would prove millennials. They would prevent millennials from forging a positive bond with government and limit the public resources directed towards the care and schooling of the neediest children. I also, um, I always add book or notes. Sorry, I forget that's backward. Notes and stuff in here, and I do want to bring up that that was one of the predictions that I feel like was when Republicans tried to rectify that fact of, of the whole uh, stereotype of we want to take away education and this, that, and the other. We did try that. It was a refunding of Title I, and it was called No Child Left Behind in 2001 by Bush, who was a Republican. We can see how well that worked out. So, uh, last little bit of this. I know I said last, but I just realized this down here. I, it is very almost instructional of like how we need to move forward with this so although both parties cater rhetorically to millennial children both are blind to what Sakelin reveals about them democrats who praise gi seniors wartime heroism don't reflect on what example of sacrifice must, must be provided to infuse the team spirit of those gi generations in the new generation while Republicans who admire the GI senior citizenship don't reflect on what image of government must be reinforced to infuse what is civic, <laughs> civic spirit in the young. All right. And it goes on and on about the unraveling. So maybe I'll make a part two. I don't want to make this too long, but check it out. The fourth turning, it's a... Uh, the strauss Howe generational theory. You can't see that from there. Okay. Thanks. Bye.